You're listening to a Weeby Geeks Network podcast. The Dining at Disney podcast. The Dining at Disney podcast. Your ultimate source about the wonderful world of dining at the Disneyland and Walt Disney World Resorts. If you are what you eat, then I only want to eat the good stuff. Kristen Hetzel Go and Jay Bratton are your guides on this culinary adventure. We'll prepare and serve with flair a culinary cabaret. Join them as they discuss the latest food news, expert tips, recommendations, and trip planning advice related to Disney food and dining. From quick service to fine dining, you will discover all the best restaurants and food as they hungrily explore the Disney parks. It brings folks together from all walks of life. The Dining at Disney podcast. And now, your host... Kristen Hensel Go and Jay Brad. It is the Dining at Disney podcast, your ultimate source for all things food related at Disney World and Disneyland. I'm Kristen, joined by Jay. How's your week been, Jay? Okay, how about yourself? Nothing exciting? <laughs> just, well, I'm pretty excited okay? this week. Yeah. The, <laughs> starting tomorrow, I'm going to be at Disneyland for three whole days. Well, oh, probably, nice. actually, more more like two whole days and then the part of the day because I'm not going to stick around for that whole 24-hour party deal. So, anyways, should be fun. One of these days, I'm going to do the 24 hours. <laughs> Just don't know when, but it's going to happen. So, <laughs> Okay, well, we've got a lot of things to cover today. We're going to be talking about the 24-hour event coming up at both Disneyland and Disney World, talking food, what to expect with that is well as some Disney Springs. I've got a review on the boathouse. And of course, to wrap it all up, as always, we've got your dining tips for dessert. So let's go ahead and get started with some appetizers. Do you want to start off or have- Why don't don't you go go for it first and then that way uh, I'll I'll bring in some other Disneyland news and then then you can uh, launch into your main course. Sounds good. Okay, so Harambe Market, will be opening up later this month. It's going to have 200 seats and it's going to be located in uh, the Africa section. That will have a very African look to it, colonial era, train station depot, 1960s, that kind of feel to it. Uh, Some of the things that you can expect to have is um, they're going to have skewered chicken and a kebab flatbread sandwich, and that's it. Kitamu Grill. They're also going to have a section called Famous Sausages, and there's going to be a corn dog that's inspired by a South African sausage dipped in a curry-infused corn batter. So that just sounds like a super kicked-up corn dog. And then you have a, a spiced rub karubi rib with green papaya k- carrot slaw. Uh, it's going to be three ribs, and then there's going to be, um, it's kind of going to be like their version of the giant turkey leg, which I think is kind of cool, because right now the alternative to that is the uh, pork shank. So this will be nice. Looks awesome. And then they're, then they're going to have what's called uh, when jo- Johi of Refreshments. It will feature six South African wines by the glass. Safari Amber Lager and Orlando Bring I4 IPA. Both of those will be on draft. There's going to be Red Sangria with Van Hernham Tangerine Liqueur, which is from South Africa. The Star of Harambe. It's going to be a frozen drink with Star African Rum with Mango Puree and a souvenir mug. For those who are not alcohol drinkers, there's going to be two beverages that you can get. They're uh, fountain drinks, and you can actually find these already. If you are familiar with Club Cool over at Epcot, you know, that little place where you can taste all of those different uh, Coca-Cola products, you may possibly have already tried Sparberry and the Bebo. Both of those are going to be offered there. I'm excited for that. I'm always excited for new food locations. So is this replacing something, or is it uh, just entirely new that they just built? It's entirely new. Since they're working on building out that Avatar Land, Ah. they had removed a stage show that was there, the Festival of the Lion King. And they built it back behind, uh, there's like a current restaurant and a bar there, and it's farther back from that. And this is going to be open in that same, same section. 
So it's a whole new little area that they're adding in. Nice. Looks so. great. There's a lot of, <laughs> it's all about new like food coming to Disney World right now. Cause my next door goes to Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar, which will be opening this fall. Uh, as many know, Downtown Disney, which is soon to be Disney Springs, is a complete disaster zone with all of the construction that's been taking place. Recently, uh, the Boathouse was the most recent thing to open down there food related. Um, a couple of other changes coming is like the expansion of Paradiso 37, the refurbishment of Planet Hollywood, and now Disney's telling us Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar is going to be an aviation themed bar located between Paradiso 37 and the Boathouse. And it's all focuses around Indiana Jones's pilot. And it's going to have a lounge that will seat 150 guests. It's going to have an expansive bar in the main dining room. Outside, you can relax in one of the permanently docked old steamboats. One of them is named for his pet snake, Reggie. According to Disney, they have emphasized that Reggie is a very important part to this bar. What that exactly means, I don't know. Are we going to have like moving snakes around or I don't know. Uh, let's see what else. Cocktails. One of them is going to be the Jovito Mojito. And then there will be a couple of small plates. It's going to be more of like a, a lounge type thing, not necessarily where you're going to go and sit and have a big meal. So you're going to have the Air Pirates Everything Pretzels served with mustard and beer cheese fondue. You can count me in on that one. And Rolling Boulder Meatballs. See, you guys out of California, you are very familiar with the Rolling Boulder. Right, of course. Well, <laughs> you know, the Indiana Jones attraction. Uh -huh. we, we, yeah, but we don't have the meatballs, so maybe that's something needed. They they should probably uh, do that at the uh, Bengal barbecue. That would be awesome. That would be cool. Rolling boulder meatballs on skewers. There you go. <laughs> so I'm excited to see what they're going to do with this. Um, a lot of people are hoping, hoping because uh, – there used to be in Pleasure Island a place called Adventure um, Adventure Club. I never went into it. It was one of those things that I would walk by back in the day and never go in. And apparently it was very, very interactive experience. And uh, people are kind of hoping that this is going to be kind of similar to that and people get involved in, in more into the atmosphere than you know, just sitting there and enjoying themselves. Chef Mickey's is going to be open for brunch starting May 31st. Chef Mickey's is located over in Disney's Contemporary and starting on the 22nd. Guests can make reservations for it. So it says the hours for brunch are going to be 1130 a.m. to 230 p.m. They will still offer breakfast and dinner. Breakfast is 7 to 11.30 and dinner 5 to 9.30. So this is early lunch, which I think is kind of nice. I'm kind of curious if it's going to be similar to what they do out over at um, Goofy's Kitchen in California. Yeah, that would be interesting. Uh, maybe they're just uh, emulating, you know, what, what's our very you know, what's already in existence, uh, out, you know, at Goofy's Kitchen and, you know, just they figure, well, that's a recipe for success. So let's do it there. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Cause there's not a place that does specifically a brunch, you know, there's always like mm -hmm. a brunch during like, you know, Christmas time or something like that when there's something seasonally and Disney has a lot of guests. So I really like the brunch over at Goofy's Kitchen, so I'm kind of hoping it's going to be along the lines of that menu. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. I mean, it, it, Goofy's Kitchen, it's okay. I mean, it's it's good. It's not great. Uh, the only thing about Goofy's Kitchen is it's so 
loud there. I mean, it's just, it's like uh, controlled chaos, basically. I mean, all the kids are running around and, you know, they're just, you know, they're amped up to go to Disneyland and, you know, they're there with all the characters and, you know, they're just, you know, it's, there's a lot of high sugar foods there, you know, so it's just <laughs> adding, it's basically adding alcohol to the fire, so to speak, you know, fuel to the fire, you know, with their, with their energy. And, and uh, you know, that's the reason why I've been to Goofy's Kitchen. I, you know, again, I, you know, the food was decent. Uh, you know, there are certain items I didn't care for so much. The other ones, you know, some things are pretty good. But uh, regardless, I just, you know, just not one of those things that I would I would prefer. You know, I, I'm, I'm more of the Storytellers Cafe, uh, their, their character breakfast uh, instead because it's a little more relaxed and, you know, the characters are a little more um, reserved and stuff like that, you know. So <laughs> yeah. And the food quality is definitely better. Anyways. Yeah. I've been, I went to Goofy's Kitchen once and the food was really good when we went, but it also wasn't busy either. Mm. So we, there wasn't a whole bunch of kids or anything like the section we were in, I think there was like two tables and that was it. Right. So it was, I don't, maybe we went in like the off time, like towards the end of it. And so it was a little bit more laid back, but. That's cool. You never know what you're going to get though. So. Right. That's very true. And last but not least of my food news is going to have to do with the 24 hour party fun going on at Magic Kingdom starting on May 22nd. Unfortunately, I am unable to attend this party, um, but I know plenty of people who are, and I've already told everybody they have to take pictures and send them to me of all of the food. So, one of the things they're going to be having is, of course, you can do the waffles at Sleepy Hollow, but they will be doing a special cupcake that's going to be available at Main Street Bakery as well as Gaston's Tavern. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Friar's Nook is going to be open. So you can get pot roast mac and cheese or bacon mac and cheese there, which is always nice. Yeah, is that part of their normal menu or they're just kind of they're not open very often oh okay interesting it's one of those like very very seasonal places um the last time i was there it was open but that's like the first time i've seen it up and operating in about 10 years interesting um and it was funny because even two years ago when i was there on july 4th it wasn't up and running uh, let's see. Tomorrowland Beach Party is going to be going on, and that'll start at 4 p.m. and nearby. Then you can grab your snacks over at the Lunching Pad. They're going to be featuring a tropical watermelon lemonade, as well as a special dog topped with pulled pork and coleslaw. Oh, they're going to have Rice Krispie treats, lick a flip flop, too. Mm -hmm. I think that's cute. <laughs> so. Yeah, if you're going, we want to hear about it. I like to hear about about people's experiences, how busy it was. Well, it's interesting. I'm I, reading through some of the other things that they're having for dinner, and one of the items uh, is a um, seafood mac and cheese. So I'm like, okay, there's the beef mac and cheese, and there's some other mac and cheese. Is there like some kind of fascination you you Walt Disney people have, Walt Disney World people have with the uh, mac and cheese, or what? <laughs> I think mac and cheese, mac and cheese was like the new thing, you know? Okay. Ah. So it went from cake pops to everything needed to be bacon to everything has sriracha. And now it's about the gourmet mac and cheese. Interesting. Cool. I'm telling you, I think that's the next thing that's going to take over all of the restaurants. Everybody's going to, in six months, it's all going to be just the mac and cheese because it's slowly been moving to that everywhere. Do you have more and more restaurants having some kind of specialty mac and cheese on their menus? That actually, that was about two years ago for us. So, yeah, and um, it, it it it's died down now. I mean, the biggest thing now, biggest thing that people like is the like truffle mac and cheese or like uh, multiple cheeses, like gourmet cheeses. You know, like four styles of cheese in one macaroni, you know, um, concoction or whatever. Yeah. 
Um, but uh, one of the things I'll mention, in, you know, just as a little bit of a preview for, for my uh, story about the Disney California Adventure during their 24-hour kickoff party for the 60th anniversary, they're having a mac and cheese pizza. So uh, I'll, I'll elaborate on that more. That could be interesting. Yeah, it doesn't sound, you know, it doesn't sound like it would work, but uh, when I read off the list of ingredients, you'd be like, oh, well, actually, yeah, maybe it will work. <laughs> Hey, I'll try almost anything once. Oh, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm right. I'm a, right there. A few years ago, I guess maybe it was about two, three years ago. Uh, Fairfield or what is it called? Fairfax Fair over in Disney's Hollywood Studios uh, launched a hot dog with mac and cheese, bacon and truffle oil. They still have that because it was just that good. Wow. I well, got it because you, you you're you like hot dogs and mac and cheese together. Like, I don't know about that. but it's Well, funny. over at uh, Refreshment Corner, I believe it is, you can request special uh, mac and cheese on your hot dog. I, You know, basically they take the kids' macaroni and cheese and then put it on their standard hot dog. I mean, it's nothing totally special, but it's one of those inside item things, you know, uh, like In-N-Out Burger. You know, they know about yeah. the you know, the, the animal style fries or whatever. I mean, you know, that's one of those insider things you can, you can order and feel special. <laughs> <laughs> one of those not on the menu things you can order. Right, right, exactly. One of the secret menus kind of thing. Right? Mm -hmm. Those are always fun. So I know you have a whole bunch of 24 hour food cause you get two parks to go to. So that's right. It's, I'm going to let you tell everybody all about this. <laughs> Well, before I uh, dive into that, I actually wanted to talk about the Disney Cruise Line uh, having a beer tasting after all. I remember I was complaining reciprocally. Uh -huh. I was like, why don't they have the beer tasting? What's wrong with them? And apparently, maybe somebody from Disney listens to us, hopefully. And uh, <laughs> if that's the case, they, they say, hey, you know what? We need to bring that thing in here. So uh, definitely, I was I was happy to hear about this. Apparently, it's going to be on all the the cruises. And one thing I was I found interesting was they uh, all the uh, all the bars on on well their their pubs or whatever on all the cruise ships are all Irish pubs. And I was like, really? Oh, I didn't even know that. You know, it's kind of kind of strange. Um, well, at least that's what it says on the on the blog uh, information. The Mc McGill's. Right. Well, there's O'Gills and the McGills and then something else, you know, whatever. Um, but the thing is, I, I just find it interesting that they all are Irish themed. Uh, regardless, um, I apparently, let's see, they're going to have, they're going to go through the history of beer, which is cool. Uh, the oldest alcoholic drink, of course. Uh, and then all kinds of fun facts. They're going to do uh, beer tastings, um, going through the different types, production methods, and ingredients. And uh, looks like it says it could include ale, stout, wheat, import, lager, and domestic lager. Probably just, I don't know, whatever they feel like at the time. And let's see what else is about the, uh, well, no, I mean, that, that's basically it. But at least they, you know, I'm glad that they brought it, uh, you know, brought it uh, into the fold because, you know, they weren't, they weren't showing any love to beer, which is a shame. I do hope when they do this that one of the beers is a lager and they do go into the German purification law when it comes to beers because it's a very strict law that they have in Germany of how their beers have to be brewed. Right, so, right. I think that's like just an important thing to go over. So Absolutely. I'm hoping that's included. So, uh, and then, okay, so on to the main thing here, uh, not the main dish, but uh, the main uh, sort of story for, for Disneyland since uh, we are uh, almost at the 24-hour 24 24 kickoff party um, that's happening on the 22nd. Uh, by the time this airs, I'm not sure – if this is going to be old news or what, but uh, regardless, I'll just go down the list of uh, some of the things that, that are going to be available for uh, Disneyland, and then uh, I'll go into DC afterwards. Uh, I'm not going to go over the list comprehensively because just, just there's a lot of stuff, so I'll just you know kind of highlight a few things. Uh, they're going to have a country fried chicken sandwich over at Carnation Cafe, which is cool. Uh, it's going to be um, you know fried chicken uh, breast and served on a brioche bun and topped with a honey mustard coleslaw. 
Then they also have uh, chicken and waffles at uh, the Plaza Inn, which is, you know, pretty much their their standard chicken. And, and then the waffles that they have for the Mickey's, uh, excuse me, Minnie's uh, breakfast uh over at um, Carne, uh, excuse me, Plaza Inn. So, you know, nothing totally spectacular there. Chicken and waffles is good, though. It is, it is, yeah. <laughs> I, love that. I love that contrast to this. Like, that would be perfect in the morning, you know, because you've been at the park all day long, you know, you've been there all night. And then it's like a combination of, like, dinner and breakfast together. There you go, exactly. Yeah. Uh, then uh, let's see some of the some of these things are kind of repeats, but you know at least they're bringing in uh, special things like the street tacos or whatever. They they have a street taco trio at uh, Rancho del, del Zocolo, but you know whatever. I mean you know at least they they have something you know unique. Uh, but one one thing I am excited about is at Hungry Bear Restaurant, and it's similar. To, apparently, it's similar to what you're getting over at Walt Disney World, but this one is a bit different. It's um, it, they call it the pulled pork, pork hot dog, and uh, it's a grilled uh, wiener. Uh, it's topped with marinated pulled pork, a citrus slaw, and fried jalapeno slices and fresh cilantro on top. It sounds just amazing, and so I'm. I'm that makes sense though, because you know, out this way, you've got you know Kansas City barbecue, mm -hmm. you've got um, Memphis barbecue. You know, the the South has a lot of that kind of stuff to it. So they kind of added more of those Southern flavors on top of it, and then out your way, added a little bit of that like um, Mexican flair to it with the cilantro and jalapenos, and that sounds yeah. really good to me. <laughs> So uh, then over at the French market, this one then is another one I, I'm excited for as well as the uh, Bananas Foster French Toast. And it's basically a brioche bread that's been battered and grilled, and it's topped with uh, caramelized bananas in a caramel sauce. And then uh, on the side is a couple strips of bacon, which, you know, everything's better with bacon. <laughs> And uh, let's see, over, uh, I'll, I'll kind of skip over what's over at uh, the Cafe Orleans because it's, it's stuff not really exciting. Uh, but what... Uh, well, one... and, and people can see this list on Dining at Disney. All, right, all right. three of those will be there for everybody to, sure, to sure. read for more detail. So. Absolutely, yes. I, I, it, that's the thing. I was writing the story when uh, the, the uh, press release uh, first came out. And I started writing it up and I was like, oh, look at all this food. And I started typing, typing, typing. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, I have like a thousand words and I, I'm not even done with <laughs> Disneyland yet. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to have to break this sucker up into two pieces, you know? So uh -huh. <laughs> I, I had to do that. Yeah, definitely. So there, there's a lot of, uh, you know, things to cover and, and uh, you should definitely check out the website to, uh, to look at all in detail. And of course, the pictures and everything. Uh, also, uh, and then the final thing I want to talk about at Disneyland, which I thought was absolutely fabulous, was at the Blue Bayou restaurant. They're going to have a Creole brined bone-in pork chop. Uh, I mean, even the picture makes my mouth water. It's just amazing. It's uh, a pork chop that's been grilled. Uh, on top, they have uh, tomato relish. And on the side, they have a like a cheesy garlic mashed potatoes and sautéed spinach. And then around to, to dress it all up is a champagne pear coulis. Uh, it, it's just, it's stunning. It's a, it's a visual splendor and I can only imagine what it, what it'll taste like. <laughs> then uh, oh. at, uh, Disney California Adventure, uh, again, I won't go into comprehensive here, but I do want to bring up some highlights. Uh, the first thing I thought was pretty cool is uh, something called the Insomniac. And this thing is, it's interesting because I've never seen anything quite like it before, which is exciting. And it's apparently, it's like this, like a tube. It looks like a, a sausage, like a large sausage. But in reality, it's a concoction made of, of uh, sausage, uh, egg, and bacon with uh, pepper jack cheese. And on top, they put these little maple crunchies on. So I don't know if it's if it's like a cereal maple crunchy or whatever, but it looks, it looks amazing. And it... I found it interesting they decided to use like these three dinner rolls that they kind of like put together and then they sliced it in half and toasted it and then they put you know all the the ingredients inside you know it's not the standard hot dog bun and I'm not sure the reason for that but you know who knows maybe it'll offer a little more 
a, maybe a little, slightly sweeter profile than a standard hot dog bun. Sounds good. Yeah, and then they do, uh, over at Wine Country Trattoria, they're going to have a surf and turf, which is a grilled sirloin steak and a roasted lobster tail. And this is another <laughs> one that looks great. Uh, has, uh, it's going to become, uh, it's going to come with uh, mashed potatoes and seasonal vegetables. And then uh, we, we discussed uh, World of Color. They're doing that uh, dining package. Uh, so that's kind of covered that. Uh, Lucky Fortune Cookery, they're going to have like some steamed chicken and vegetable dumpling bowl, which is eh, whatever. I, you know, I'm, I'm not too too thrilled about that. But, you know, at least they're, they're doing something different again. Uh, and then over at the Cozy Cone Motel, they're going to have a barbecue pulled pork and slaw cone. And this looks good. It's uh, basically, you know, the, their signature cone, and it's uh, filled with the pulled pork and uh, coleslaw on top, so that should be fun. And then the final thing, well, no, actually, it's not the final thing. I'll, I'll save the, the uh, dessert for last, just as, as always. Uh, they have a mac and cheese pizza, which I mentioned previously. And now, you know, as I, I mentioned, it's, you know, the mac and cheese for a topping on pizza. I mean, you got, like, carb on top of carb, but... You know, it, whatever. I mean, you're going to be there for 24 hours. You, you need that carb load, right? That's then, true. You yeah, need to, so, to carry your energy if you're going to do 24 hours. Exactly. And uh, this thing comes, uh, besides the mac and cheese, it also comes with bacon bits and uh, mozzarella cheese and bacon pesto. And then the, the sauce is not your standard tomato-based sauce. I mean, it is tomato-based, but it's instead of using like regular tomatoes, they're they're doing sun-dried tomatoes, which I thought was really cool. Then uh, the, the final thing uh, that I want to mention, they do have a s'mores bar, which sounds fabulous. It's either a vanilla or chocolate ice cream bar. So you have your choice there. And then the next option is you can either have milk or dark chocolate to dip it in. Then after the, that's made, uh, that selection's made, then the uh, bar is drizzled with fluff. Well, they say fluff, which I assume would be marshmallow, and uh, graham cracker crumbs. So it sounds sounds absolutely amazing and fabulous, and I'm just, I'm really pumped up to try a lot of these things here. I, I you know, I my stomach is only so big, so unfortunately I can't have it all, but uh, I'll, try, I'll try to cover, some, you know, as much as I can. <laughs> This is why I'm always like, oh, hey, uh, what are you doing today? Can you join me at the park? Because this way, the more people I can get together when I'm at the park, the more foods I can try. <laughs> so you're like, what are you going to get? You know, that sounds really good. You should try that. <laughs> <laughs> then everybody knows, do not, do not touch your food. Do not eat your food until pictures are taken. <laughs> exactly. I've been in a restaurant where somebody went to dig it, and I'm like, yo, no, 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 stop, stop. What? I had to take a picture. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Oh, uh, that sounds yummy. And, you know, while you're getting food, uh, one of the things you might want to uh, have as a memento is some food-related merchandise. Uh, they're going to have all kinds of different popcorn buckets, mugs, souvenir sippers. It, it's going it, to, the thing that astounds me is that they waited like for basically all this time to release a majority of these items. Um, apparently uh, this past week they uh, released the, the Cinderella bucket, uh, which I, you know, I haven't seen it in person, but, you know, people are posting it on Facebook, like, oh, we got it, we got it, finally, you know, just like, you know, well, it's, you know, two months after, you know, the, the Disney World got it, but, you know, whatever, at least we got it, and, um, but they're going to have a bunch of other things uh, being, um, you know, being released at the same time. We had mentioned it previously because the news releases had been slowly trickling out over the you know the past several months, uh, but now you know we we I I actually put together a checklist. So if you want to go to the Dining at Disney website and look at the story I wrote about this, and I put little little kind of little circle thing. So basically, you just as you buy it, then you just check it off, check it off, check it off, and and I put pictures of all the merchandise so you can. Uh, look at exactly what you, you know you can 
when you when you're at a distance away from the popcorn cart or the, or the refreshment stand or what have you, then you can spot it. It's like oh, there that's that. Oh, you know, yeah. there's, there, there's you know the Darth Vader bucket or there's the the Mickey Bloom bucket or whatever, and so that's the thing that'll hopefully it'll be helpful to some people to get as much merchandise as possible. Uh, just want to kind of highlight a few, uh, show some pictures so people can check it out for themselves. Uh, they have the Mickey balloons, uh, the Mickey balloon popcorn bucket, and it's in three different colors. It's a uh, red, blue, and purple. They look so cool, and you know, I we just you know we're we're <laughs> running out of room in my house, you know, and and. I, I really don't want all three, but my wife wants all three, so I might have to, might have to, I don't know. You're going to need to get some some shelving uh, you're right. for the popcorn and then have another shelf that's for the sippers. Exactly. Yeah, I still want that Olaf one you have. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so cool. And then uh, the other thing uh, they'll have here, let me go ahead and uh, stop this one. The other thing they'll have that I'm excited about as well is the oil can sippers, and that's going to be at Cars Land. You can see a picture of that. It's a Dynaco little homage to, uh, well, a lot of the Pixar films, really. I mean, Dynaco, it was, you know, and featured in multiple, multiple yeah. uh, Pixar films, so that's kind of cool. And uh, it's very cute. I mean, you know, I... It's not the the most exciting merchandise, you know, but at the same time, it is very unique. That's for sure. Uh huh. And I like then, the Han Solo popcorn bucket. Oh uh, yeah, that uh, that looks pretty cool. Also, I I think they have that at Disney World, though, right? And uh, that's something that well, they remember they had the um. Oh, I wonder wonder if maybe that's because remember we looked at the picture for the three different um cupcakes. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's what the cupcakes come in. Because remember, we couldn't tell what the box exactly was. Right, right. That might be. Well, it. yeah, I'll I'll screen share this. I didn't uh I didn't actually open this up here, but people so people can kind of take a look at it. Uh, let's see if I can. Yeah, it's uh I don't know if I can zoom in on this sucker here, but. You know, it's cool. I mean, it, it's like a frozen in carbonite thing or whatever. And, you know, anyways, you could check it out on the website. But the the last thing, well, and the, the other thing they're going to have is like the Big Thunder Mine Train popcorn bucket, which I basically, like yeah, it, yeah, it's a rip off of what you guys already have, though. You know, it's it, the Seven Dwarves Mine Train. It's just instead of the uh, the jewels on top being red or pink or something, that they're uh, like diamond, which, you know, I mean, it's still cool. Don't get me wrong. I mean, and I'm still going to buy one, but I'm just saying, you know, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not entirely. You know, you, <laughs> they have to multi purpose some of these things. Right, right. And then there's going to be a Boba Fett mug, which is kind of cool, uh, you know, to kind of, uh, you know, go along with the Han Solo uh, carbonite thing, which is which is mm -hmm. nice. And then the other this and then this one, I'm just going to finish off with this one because this is this is the ultimate. OK, I, I have to have this. And, and in fact, when we were I off the air, yeah. oh, yeah, uh, yeah. This is, I, it's, it's, it, they're basically I'm going to have to get two of these suckers because they're so awesome looking and, and I want one. Or two, I should say. <laughs> and here it is. Oh, yeah. That Disneyland 60th anniversary Stein. It's so, it's just magnificent and so detailed. I love the castle on the top. It look, it, I, 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 I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's made out of plastic, but it, you know, the, the top does look like pewter. So, you yeah. know, with the traditional German Steins, which is, which is magnificent. And, but you know, the, so the good thing is that it, being plastic it'll be it'll help minimize the cost and then also if you drop it yeah whatever you know what i mean just just dust it off and no big deal you know whereas the real stein you, you drop it and then well, they're heavy too yeah yeah exactly and then you know and they, they're going to shatter all over the place you know except for for the little pewter metal piece on top but uh you know the downside though is that this is i mean i wish they they would sell the real deal as well you know like yes go ahead and have the plastic one but come on you know bring you know, give, give us the real deal as well. I mean, I'd like, I'd love to have a collector mug of this type. I'm actually, 
actually surprised that they don't have something like that. Right. Well, they sell um, over in the Germany Pavilion, don't they sell steins there? Or Yeah, they're real steins. And there's ah. not any like this. They're actually real steins from Germany. Oh, okay. So they're not Disneyland or Disney World specific. No. Uh, well, that's too bad. They're nice, but... Sure. Cool. cool. Well, and then, I do uh, want like one it... of those anniversary glow cubes. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> that was like, so cool. I want one. Okay. I'll see if I can get you one. So, yes, for sure. That would be awesome. And... <laughs> like, that's so cool. The, uh, better and then, than the little, little ones that they don't really give out. Yeah. So, you know, again, check out the story. I wrote a really long piece. And again, it's a checklist. So you can go down, you know, all the, the uh, various merchandise that's going to be available and, you know, figure out what you have, what you don't have, what you want, what you what you want and what you can afford are maybe two different things. So, you know, at least you'll have a shopping list of, of things you can, you know, kind of plan plan for. And then and see, the, that's why you have like a jar that you put coins in throughout the year. And that way you're like, oh, I have this loose change. And you start throwing that stuff in there. And then, you know, something like this comes around. And you go, oh, that's what those coins are going to be for. I'm going to roll all of them up. Or I'm going to take them to, you know, the grocery store and put it in one of those little things where they count it. Yeah. And you're like, hey, look at all this extra money. I can now have, in a way, free souvenirs. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Uh, you know, so basically some of the things I say, you know, like it's not only like a matter of budget, it's also a matter of practicality. Uh, you know, if you're going to go to the resort and you see, you know, you want four popcorn buckets, are you going to be able to carry four popcorn buckets? <laughs> you know, I mean, those things aren't small. And and uh, so, you know, just bring a big old reusable bag or something like that. And and then, you know, they, they definitely, you know, four four popcorn buckets or even two popcorn buckets will, won't fit in the locker. So, you, you you know, need to take that into consideration and maybe kind of plan your day around that. Um, because the thing is, like the newsstand, the Main Street newsstand uh, at the front of the park, if you buy merchandise, uh, like somewhere, let's say, um, you know, you're, you're inside and, and um, you purchase, you know, like, five t-shirts or something like that you can take that to the main street newsstand and they'll hold it for you for the entire day until you leave well with the popcorn buckets they won't do that so that's that's something you know that i wish they would do but unfortunately they don't on so anyways but uh yeah can so i'm excited the number of popcorn buckets they'd have then <laughs> yeah exactly they have to have like a storage locker of for all the popcorn buckets like okay which one did you get okay well we're gonna guess this one's yours <laughs> right so that's it that's uh you know i mean it's it's uh doesn't seem like a lot but it is a lot you know really and and uh the 60th anniversary is going to be insane and i'm hoping i can you know <sighs> endure the crowds that are going to be on the you know present on the 22nd they've already released a uh the, you know like their own kind of plan of action for for the the uh guests and they said that um what did they say you can start lining up at two o'clock in the morning uh and that you can bring like you know sleeping bags and, and games and things like that they said but if you do you're going to have to clean it all up and, and you won't be able to take it inside the park with you. So just take that into consideration. And they're opening the gates at six o'clock in the morning. Um, and I'm trying to think, I believe they That's said that. That's not too bad then. Yeah, Four I hours. believe they still were, they were opening up. Well, they're opening up the, the parking lot at 11 o'clock. They're just not letting people line up until two o'clock. So you can get there at 11 o'clock at night, the night before, and then you just have to hang out for three hours and then at two o'clock then that's when they start the lineup wow yeah i just can't do that yeah well some people do you know i know I there's a lot of people who do well daniel from the Diz Geek podcast he did that with his daughter i remember and, that and uh so you know that you know hey that's cool man and, you know and and if you got the the stamina for it, i mean tommy does it and chris does it and so i mean you know i'm just i i'm not i you know as i mentioned before i you know i don't have anything against people doing it just i just i'm not one of those type of people so that's your like i'll buy you a drink 
when I get here, if you get this for me. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Like when you're going to buy your stuff, pick these things up for me and I'll buy your lunch or I'll buy you like two beers or whatever. Right, exactly. It's always my bribery. Like if you get this, I'll buy you something for saving me that time. There you go. Sometimes it works. Yeah. So, well, I think it's going to be a lot of fun and I can't wait to watch everybody's Instagram photos and all that kind of stuff. Well, the Disney Parks blog is actually going to be uh, video casting it. They're going to do the Paint the Night Parade and, as, and the fireworks as well online. So if you want to check that out, it's on the Disney Parks blog. I believe they said that it's going to start at 8.30 at night, that they're going to start the live cast. And uh, also uh, the, the following days on the, the 22nd and the 23rd, you know, during the daytime, they're going to be doing some live casts as well. So, you know, you should check into that. I mean, I don't have all the details, but, you know, again, go to the Disney Parks blog and they'll, you can find the information there. Yeah. That'll be fun. I just will hope that their system doesn't crash. Because, you know, a lot of times when, like, they release travel deals or whatever, there's so many people going online that the system crashes. I just hope that doesn't happen with all those people trying to watch that. Because I'd be ashamed to miss out on that then. Exactly. Well, I guess it is now time to move on to our main dish, which is going to be a review of the Boathouse, which is one of the new restaurants, actually the newest restaurant to open in uh, downtown Disney, soon to be called Disney Springs. So I'm going to share a few of the photos that I've taken. Oh, uh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Let's, come on. <laughs> I always hit the button instead of hitting preview, which is what I really wanted to do is hit preview. You know what? All you have to do is double click on the window that you want to open. Just it's a shortcut. It's faster. But you know what? I did that and mine opens in my editing program. Ah, interesting. So I have to do it as preview. Ah, okay. And that's what I always forget. So. Okay, so the Boathouse is located right near um, Paradiso 37, same side, right along the waterway. And it's, um, here we go. Okay, so it's located right along the water and it's across from where, um, back behind Raglan Road. So it's got a really nice location. It's actually huge. When you look at the pictures of the place, it looks like from that, there's like another building and it looks like it's fairly small, but it's actually quite a massive location. I can scroll through these. Um, so that's, you know, the outside of the building. Um, inside, here's a look at, they've got a bar out back this is what that bar looks like. Um, and it's behind the restaurant, which you can't see. Um, and it literally sits right on the water where you can also see the, the boats. They have 18 different, um, what I call mini yachts. They hold uh, two to four people in them, little tiny ones that they look like yachts that somebody just like shrunk down. Some of them look like cars. Um, so those are pretty neat. There's that. Now on the back side of that bar is where the water is. You can kind of see the lights from the other buildings across the way in the background of it. That looks cool. It uh, it almost looks like uh, I'm trying to like a marina, like a I don't know. I'm trying to think the the right to correct words here. That's a oh yeah, it a has a bar or something. Feel. Yeah. And the inside, this is one of the dining rooms. This is the dining room we were in. And you can see how there's like a white table next to next to where we were sitting. Mm -hmm. And that's the back side. So it's not a, a large dining room, but there's three of them, three different dining rooms that you go through. And we were in the middle one. And opposite the wall that has, you know, faces the marina with the big windows there's actually a second bar in 
the restaurant there. And it's a, it's a smaller bar and it can get quite loud, unfortunately. But they did an excellent job because it did get pretty loud when we were in there. There was a whole bunch of guys that had been dining outside and they came in and went to this bar. Um, then it seats about 10 people, but there was like 20 of them. And the management did really well. They kind of walked up and, you know, very quietly to, you know, two, three people who were stand talking to each other, you know, said that, you know, if they could please go outside, you know, that I don't exactly know what they said to him, but they did a really good job. People were like, sure, man, whatever, and walked back outside. So it brought the noise level down. Um, I'm not sure why they placed the bar there because of the fact that you could get a lot of people. Um, when you first enter the restaurant, though, there is a big bar. And this bar also, um, also has the raw like the raw bar as well. So you can see the oysters and shrimp and the caviar that they sell there as well. And that's it. As you can tell, there's like, that's the one side of the bar. And then there's a, it's a circular bar. So it's the same on the other side. Um, there's also small, like four high top um, or high top tables that hold four people that sit around there as well. So it's, it's really well decorated um as you can see on the walls i mean everything has that boating feel they even sell boating motors in the shop wow which is kind of cool um and here i ordered i didn't get many of them but this is how they present their raw bar food it comes out uh on a nice metal what looks like a clamshell ice and they've got the condiments with the like i said i got one of one of each but it normally you know you, you're gonna order more than one of each but i wanted to at least sample them oh <laughs> yeah she got it to me like i was a little crazy like okay that you sure <laughs> so so you can actually order one piece of each individual item yeah you you order the oysters and the shrimp individually they're priced per one and i believe it's 350 each let me check um the wild caught baja cocktail shrimp that was four and then oyster on the half shell it's 350 each so that's kind of expensive for oysters but that's all right well i don't know if that's going great right out there i mean here we we have um uh restaurants that do happy hours uh for a dollar each oyster you know yeah. i mean of course it depends on the variety as well I and mean, you know the kumamoto's or whatever the different uh, hog bay oysters and stuff like that hog island i should say i mean you know those it, you know it depends on the season you know depends on you know the availability and things like that so yeah and there's anyway. is brought in fresh every day um hmm. That and this is a higher end restaurant. It's not like you're gonna go in there and get, you know, like a seven dollar hamburger. I mean, it does have a hundred and fifteen dollar steak. So, you know, that's one of those things you have to remember when you're dining there. You have to plan. You know, you're gonna spend quite a bit of money. So that's one thing to always consider. Um, this is what I had. It was and let me. I'll actually read the exact description. Um. It is the grilled line caught Florida Mahi Mahi tacos. Uh, there's three of those and it has, it has pickled radishes, Serrano mango sauce, cojita cheese. That was one of the selling points to me. And uh, it's served with arugula slaw that is topped with grilled corn. And it was really good. I liked it. But I also like fish tacos. The, but they were perfectly cut. So that's, you know, that's always a plus. Um, I and I love, I love the uh, grill. Sorry to interrupt you. I was just saying, I love grilled fish tacos, fried fish tacos. They're okay. You know, but it just, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. Grilled tastes better to me. I love that little char flavor and then the freshness of the fish. It's not lost in the batter and, and things like that. So. Yeah. It otherwise, yeah, it gets too, like too much batter. Right. 
Uh, and Al John had ordered what is called the Gibson Sandwich King Burger Hop Champion. It has crispy cherry peppers, jalapeno Havarti, and a spicy mayo. And it's served with hand cut fries. And their fries are, are amazing. They have that starchiness to the fries that so many places don't have anymore. You know? So. Mm -hmm. I was happy with the French fries. It almost looked like in and out French fries. They're those, they're not quite as thin as that. Oh, okay. Um, you've had, you've had in and out French fries, right? I mean, yes, I you, have. Fancy coffee. okay. <laughs> Just making oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, in and out is a must do <laughs> when I visit California. It's like, we have <laughs> to find a way to get me in and out food. So last time when I was there, um, Big Bubba, who's one of the correspondents for Sorcerer Radio, and his wife Taylor, we went. They're like, we will get you to In and Out Burger. <laughs> so, and I enjoyed it so much that I went up and I got more food. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> no, I have to get more of this. Um, oh, the dessert that they have. It is forty dollars. It's for four people, and it is huge. So you can see why you can see the beer bottle back there and the beer bottle only comes up to like maybe a little bit past into like the white part. That's how big that thing is. Wow. That's amazing. The people who order it, there was four of them. They gave us some and the table next to them who also had four people ate the rest of what that was. Wow. So I mean, it's, that's a big dessert. So yeah, um, that's something you might want to start with. <laughs> is that the, uh, I'm sorry, that's the baked Alaska you said? Yeah. Yeah, it looked like it. It's a huge dessert. Now, one of, they've got some unique seating in the restaurant as well. Um, this is the front of one of the tables. And back on the back side of the boat is the seating that holds six people. Interesting. So do you have to reserve that special or is it just whatever first come first serve or how, how do they determine who, who gets to sit in that? I think it's a first come first serve. So if you get there and that's what you want and somebody's sitting in it, then you're just going to have to wait till they get up kind of thing. Ah. Um, it's like getting a waterfront table at the, the Blue Bayou. I mean, even you know, you can you can wait for waterfront, or you can just you know just say, well, whatever, just you know, do it next time. Oh yeah, uh, the third dining room, as you can see, has some boating pictures, but this is a really nice collection of wines that they have to offer, and the prices range uh, quite a bit as well. Um, you could get a bottle of wine for thirty two dollars. And all the way up to for a bottle of champagne, three hundred and fifty dollars. So, you know, you've you've got quite a few things to uh, to choose from. Some of them are offered by the glass, not all of them, of course. And let's see. Oh, here's a look at what the area where you can see in this photo that along the walkways there are the boats and there's 18 of them uh one of the captains said that the most expensive one cost nine hundred thousand dollars wow for boat. so there's 18 boats so that's pretty pricey um they're still working with walt disney world to figure out how it's going to function considering they are not owned by disney and the waterway of course is owned by disney so there's when we were there they were still working out the logistics with uh disney to figure out how long they could be on the water when they could be on the water and what they were going to have to charge because of whatever disney's gonna you know have them pay for the usage of their water but it it was it's beautiful at night. It's a nice air that you can walk around and just kind of relax. Uh, they do have an interesting shop that you can buy things. You can buy um, 
cups and shot glasses and tumblers, all of that kind of stuff that has their logo on it. You can buy paddles. Um, you can buy motors for boats. You can get a little itty bitty motor that's like two inches tall for $350. <laughs> so you could add it to like a rubber ducky and yeah. have him swim around in your bathtub. But there are some very beautiful things. This is one of my favorite things that I saw. Um, and they're eight to nine hundred dollars. And it's the salt and pepper grinders. They have unique, beautiful wood on them. And then there's and I don't remember the price. I want to say it was thirty dollars, maybe forty dollars for uh, it's a wood board that you put on top of the bottle of your wine with two wine glasses so that's a nice kind of thing to have you know if you're playing on you know enjoying a glass of wine at dinner you can kind of set that all up and everything's kind of ready for whenever you do want to take something to drink or you know maybe you keep that in your living room for or, you know, when you have guests over, oh, hey, would you like a glass of wine? Here, I can open it and here's everything ready for you. So uh, I would say it's a restaurant I'll definitely be going back to. I really, I really enjoyed the, the food. Um, it is on the pricey end. Um, like well, I, I was, ex I was expecting to see the tomahawk chop. What happened? <laughs> yeah, the tomahawk chop was just... Um, was not in the budget for that night. <laughs> and neither was the $100 caviar. Right. But one day when I win the lottery, I'm going to do the caviar, the most expensive bottle of wine. I am doing the, um, the surf and turf combo and I'm going to leave fat and happy because yeah. I will have had that much food. <laughs> For me, if I if I went there, I would be at the raw bar and I'd just say, keep them coming. Just until I start raising my hand, say enough, then you know, just keep them coming. <laughs> That's oh, the way oyster. I love seafood. Oh yeah. I love oysters, shrimp, perfect uh, mussels, you know, clam even raw clams are good too, you know, served correctly. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I'm I'm not supposed to eat raw oysters anymore. Mm. And so I haven't in ten years. But I couldn't resist. I was like, I have to have one. <laughs> I have to be able to tell people about it. I have to be able to write about it. And I used to go to the beach in Florida. And every time I go, I'd be like, yeah, bring me two dozen raw oysters and we'll start there. And that, you know, I just sit there and eat them all day long. And I miss getting to have them. But those were perfect. Like, even if you didn't like oysters, that would be a place I would tell you, try your first oyster. If you don't like it there, then you're not going to like them ever. Mm. Then don't bother. But yeah, they were very, very fresh. So, but I'll have like a full, there's going to be on the site, a full long review and all of the 44 photos that I have of various things from the different dining rooms, different things that you can get in the gift shop. Um, they do have live music in the first room where the giant bar is. Mm -hmm. There is um, live music. The other side of that bar as well, the doors lift up so you can walk straight in and out through the back. That'll take you to the smaller bar that sits right on the waterway and all of the little boats uh, in that section as well. But Oh, and the staff was fantastic. I mean, you need anything and you've got it like that, you know, so. Good deal. Yep. Sounds I would like say great, great food. food, great service, beautiful restaurant. And uh, if the price tag doesn't scare you off, definitely try it. Cool. You ready for dessert? I am ready for dessert. Let's wrap this baby up. Okay. So. Uh, so my my uh, dessert tip is in relation to the you know merchandise the food uh, merchandise that I had mentioned previously. So if you're going to Disneyland Resort or even Walt Disney World for that matter, uh, well actually I don't know if they do at Walt Disney World. I'm assuming that they do. If you want one of those souvenir popcorn buckets or a, or a mug or what have you, 
you can actually ask for the product, whatever it is, either popcorn or, or you know, drink or whatever the soda, you can ask for that in a separate container. So then that way, you know, you don't have to put the popcorn in the bucket and then you can, yeah, sure you can. And then you can eat it from there, but then, you know, it gets all greasy and salty and, you know, or the drink, you know, if you have a, a Coke or something like that, it's, just, you know, it's going to leave a little stain. So and then you got to go home, you got to wash it and, you know, make it nice and pretty again. Well, instead of going through all that, just, you know, ask for it on the side, you know, and then that way you have your, your popcorn and then you have your souvenir, you know, and and you can keep them separate and and uh when you get home just put it up on the shelf and you're good to go that definitely makes it a lot easier than going into the bathroom and trying to clean it in the the bathroom sink so have you ever done that at disney world i have not i always okay. get it and go into the bathroom and oh, I oh okay well, it's that's just something to like out. i just don't think i don't not. think of that right. but you know what i don't have any of the souvenir popcorn buckets yet ah I've got my souvenir things are always little drink things. Like I've got the um, Gaston mug from, you know, getting the LeFou's brew. And I've got, you know, the stuff from Trader Sam's. And I just never think to say, oh, hey, can you put it in something else so I don't dirty this? I just take it and then wash it in the bathroom and go into a shop and go, uh, can I have a plastic bag? <laughs> that always goes with me so i do need to get some of the popcorn buckets because over the past couple of years they've come out with so many that are really cool yeah they they've uh i think they've been inspired by tokyo disneyland because if you look at uh, some of the like there's a disney popcorn bucket group on facebook and yeah. uh, they, they post all these really cool popcorn buckets from Tokyo Disneyland. And not only do they have the souvenir popcorn buckets, they actually have flavored popcorn, like multiple flavors all over the place. And it's just astounding. I mean, I know you have that at Disney World and, you know, there are uh, some flavored popcorns at Disneyland, but not not so much. I mean, it's not really a point of emphasis, I guess, for, for them uh, regardless. But they have been really getting into the... Uh, you know the the unique popcorn bucket thing you know, trend which is awesome i i mean there's nothing wrong with the little cylindrical one with the artwork but eh, you know like but when you get one that looks like a cinderella coach i mean come on now I mean, there's no comparison right no because see that's something you're going you know, to want to keep forever instead of exactly throw away at some point and go eh whatever right just give that to goodwill you know yeah, or give it to the kids to you know put their crayons in or something like that, you know just to jump uh -huh. off or something you know here, take it to the beach, make a castle with it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, my tip is to eat during the off hours. You know, consider booking a meal either early or late. It, it serves kind of two purposes. One is it's not going to be as loud and as crowded. And secondly, it's going to make it so much easier for you to get an advanced dining reservation if you book in these off times. You know, you could book plan to plan one meal to either be a late breakfast or early lunch the next one could be or you could do like late lunch early dinner or a late dinner and that keeps you from those those extremely popular times to die you know uh, everybody wants to die between like 5 30 and 7 30. Uh, so if you're trying to get something at like 8 30 at night you might be able to get that restaurant you can't get otherwise right now that would be be our guest over at Magic Kingdom because it's that thing goes at 180 days. So that's one way to get you're more likely to get it. But you can also use that to save yourself some money too. If you do a late lunch and do it right before the dinner hour, you're going to save some money. Prices often are a little bit lower on the lunch menu than the dinner menu. And you could just get stop and get some kind of snack somewhere. Maybe you get some popcorn. And that's what you have later in the day. And then you're, you're good to go. So that is my tip. Cool. Well, that will wrap everything up this week. And um, Jay, tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, on Twitter, you can find me at Magical Food Tour. Uh, and they're also online, MagicalFoodTour.com. Also, check out the Diz Geek podcast. We just celebrated our 100th episode. So we're happy about that, and hopefully we'll have another 100 episodes, uh, God willing. And uh, 
uh, it's a uh, you know all about Disneyland. Uh, and also, if you want to follow Daniel uh, on Twitter uh, for the Dis Geek Podcast, you can find him at Dis Geek Podcast. So yeah, there you go. Please tell Daniel I am so sorry that I forgot to send in my message. I sure. realized it the <laughs> next day and went. <gasps> I feel out when I were like, I just told him, I was like, I feel so bad because I told Daniel I was going to get that to him. And then things just. Oh, there you go. You'll, you'll be on, you'll be on 101, episode 101. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, please tell him I am so sorry about that. But um, as for where you can find me, dining at Disney.com, you can find Jay's articles there as well, of course, uh, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. It's uh, dining at Disney. It's the Dining at Disney on YouTube where you can watch this and our other podcasts and some other fun videos of things like candy apples being made. So, but yeah, make sure you do that. Download our podcast, subscribe, and please give us five star ratings. Uh, Jay and I would love for you to do that. So until next time, I'm Kristen with me is Jay and Bon Appetit. <laughs>